So today we are going to be going over the odds of hitting a solo block on one of these miners. So this is a Canon Avalon Nano 3S and it's a solo heater for Bitcoin mining. So the main purpose is to actually pool mine and recoup some of the cost of heating backwards through mining Bitcoin obviously. But a lot of people have been using it to start solo mining. And the reason we got this is because there was a lot of comments saying, you know, you could buy this for extra hash rate. And we did a comparison video if you want to check it out between this and the Nerd QX++. But this is currently mining as well to our pool. So this is currently part of our solo mining rig as well. So overall, we have four bit axes, one Nerd QX++ and this. But today we're going to go into the odds of actually hitting a block on one of these. So how long it would take. I know usually, as I said, it's for pool mining, but we are just using it for solo mining. And I feel like a lot of people are these days because it offers a lot of terahash for a small amount of money. And also I got this to work. So this is the kind of display dashboard. Uh, all you have to do is actually click the button. So if you click, it goes over to a clock click again, goes over to this and then click again and it will bring up this. I believe that that is the time that it's been running because I think we unplugged it. And then the terahash at the top, obviously in the watts down here. So one thing I didn't see was the watts down here when we were doing a comparison video, I just assumed it was 140, but it is actually 132 at 6.34. So. If you've watched that video, the calculations were slightly off for this, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference when you're looking at it. Let's get into everything about solo mining on this in terms of the odds. And then we'll also go through how much it costs to actually mine on this solo mining versus the pool mining, because you can recuperate some of the costs if you're pool mining and using it as a heater. So let's jump over to the computer now and we'll go through all of that. But before we get into that, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Crypto Miner Bros. Since 2018, CryptoMinerBros.com has been the premier site for top tier crypto mining hardware, earning the trust of miners across the globe. The prices displayed on their site cover shipping and DDP straight to your doorstep, ensuring no unexpected costs at checkout. They deliver to over 100 countries and even provide lower invoicing options to help you cut down on customs fees. Payment is a breeze with options like direct bank transfer or cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin, USDT or Ethereum. With over 250 ASIC options, they stock some of the channel's favorites like the Bitax, the Bitax Touch and the Avalon Nano 3S. Join tens of thousands of happy customers who rely on CryptoMinerBros.com for dependable hardware fulfillment, clear pricing and a top-notch service. Check out CryptoMinerBros.com today, link in the description. So here we are on the computer and we currently do have this mining. This is kind of swarmed in with, I believe that this is our Bitax workers, our Nano that we have here, and then the Nerd QX. Hash rate is sitting around 16 terahash overall. Obviously we're focusing on the Nano today, but overall that's kind of what the farm's looking like. I think I have a video coming out about how much it actually costs to run it currently. Now it does display the block probability here, but that is all of the hash rate combined. So that'd be daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. So that's all of it combined. So we don't really need that number necessarily. We need just the hash rate here. Now I do have a video telling you guys how to actually calculate that yourself, but there's a bunch of calculators out there that you can use. So it doesn't really matter too much. We could just use solochance.com to show you the amount of terahash per second. So you enter that in and then it's going to give you the figure or the probability of hitting a block solo. So if we go per second, that's going to be 6.33 based off of what we're seeing on the LCD. Remember that with the Avalon Nano, there's not really any functionality in terms of viewing it on a web page. I know some people have suggested some things, but to be honest with you, I'd just like to be able to just view it on a web page as their own XOS page type of thing. But maybe that's coming in the future. So we have Terahash 6.33. Currently, if we click go, that is going to give us our chances per block. 
So every block, we have a 1 in 138 million chance. And then every day, we have 1 in about a million chance. And then time estimation is 2,642 years. So you can do the same kind of conversion for the chances per day. So that means in 964,000 days, your luck on the network should equal 100 and you should hit a block on one of these. There is a lot of factors that go into it. And mainly it's going to be that the difficulty is increasing more and more and more. So this has only been running, I want to say, for maybe a couple of days. And our highest difficulty is 255 million, which is very, very small when we compare it to the overall Bitcoin difficulty. Because currently the network is at, if we look all time, it's 123T. So it goes M, G, and then T. So M is million. Or people say it's mega hash. I don't actually know. So you can let me know in the comments. It's either mega, giga, or terra. But it's up to whatever. It could be also millions, billions, and then trillions. I don't actually know what the scale is, but it goes up in that factor. As you can see here, that is in the M range, and then it goes to G range, and then it goes to T range here. So just looking at this, the difficulty that we've best hit is 255. So it's obviously nowhere near a Bitcoin block difficulty. There is some certain coins that we probably hit a block on, but maybe Digibyte is one that's the closest. So I think Digibyte is maybe 1.2 G. So you need something around there to actually hit a block, but that's obviously going to pay out less. So as I said, the main factor is going to be the difficulty increasing. So this number here in years, 2,642 years, you can already see that over the past 10 years, even the difficulty has increased vastly from this G range all the way up into the T range. And then I don't actually know what it is past that. I think it's a P range. So the letter P, I don't know, let me know in the comments. And that's going to continue as long as people mine Bitcoin. Difficulty does come down if people pull off the network. But as you can see here, there's not really much drawback on the network. This was when Bitcoin mining kind of crashed, I would say. So you have 25T all the way down to 14 or 13T, which is not that big of a crash. It's maybe half of the hash rate taken off the network. And that's where the difficulty adjusted. But since then, even in 2022 and 2023, when the profits from Bitcoin weren't great, the hash rate was still steadily going up as well. And then there's a bit of a dip off here, but mainly it's been rising pretty exponentially over the time that Bitcoin has been around. And it's probably going to continue to keep going. So by the time it hits 2,642 years, there's probably no chance that you'll hit a difficulty that high. It is all based on luck. In the next block, I could hit a Bitcoin block or anyone around the world could hit a Bitcoin block on a Bitax, a Nerdax, one of these Avalon Nanos. Anything like that could happen. But on a probability scale, it's most likely not going to be you. The whole thing with solo mining is if there's more solo miners out there, the probability that the next block will be solo mined increases. So you won't have as much pool centralization. If we click on the mempool now, you can see this happening. So right here, you can see all of the blocks that have been mined. And the main kind of goal of solo mining is to take away all the blocks being mined by a couple of pools out there because that becomes heavily centralized over time. So via BTC, Foundry, uh, Mara, Spiderpool, Foundry, via BTC, as you can see, not a lot of unknowns. So this is one unknown here, which if we click into here is probably from a farm somewhere. So they've total received 82 Bitcoin, which means they probably have a substantial amount of hash rate that is constantly hitting blocks over time. As you can see here, it hit one block down there, one, another one here, another one there. So I'm assuming their probability is pretty good in terms of the hash rate. So to consistently hit a couple of blocks in a month, you need a massive amount of hash rate. But even then, I'm sure that this is funded somewhere. It might just be a container or a mining farm that is mining to their own node. You know, you can't really get that much information on it. But, but overall, you want to take away from the fact that all of the blocks are being hit mostly by a couple of maybe I'd say top 
five to six pools out there, and that's the whole point of solo mining. Remember, each chip also does hit each block. So there's a mining pool out there that might have, you know, half of the hash rate of the network. But every time that that hits a block, it's only one ASIC miner that's actually doing that computation. The rest of them are not hitting that difficulty. So that's how bit axes, nerd axes, lower hash rate miners can actually hit blocks. As I said, 2,642 years, probably not good odds to hit a block on one of these. And it's probably more useful to pool mine it as heat because that's their intended purpose. And we can do a calculation for this. So power cost is at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. I know basically everyone in the EU doesn't have that. But in the US, you might have that. So we'll just do that calculation for you right here. So 6.33 and the watts was 134. And then we just get calculate. So profitability isn't great. And it obviously depends on the price of Bitcoin. But the recuperation would be this much in BTC. And because this is used as a heater rather than actually a miner to solar mine or to pool mine, the cost to payoff ratio is going to be whatever ratio the power cost is to the profit. So if you're heating up a room or with these ones as kind of hand heaters, maybe it gets cold in a certain room. There's even other utilizations for it. Like we've seen people heat up cold blooded animal enclosures. So geckos and lizards and stuff like that using these smaller heaters. And it's just a way to recoup some of the power costs. So you're going to be two cents every day over the year that's going to be what a couple of dollars but then you get a substantial amount of bitcoin that you have to spend basically and you've recouped some of that cost as heat energy so it's not really wasted you've recouped it through the heating so you can do a little calculation for whatever that is right here so 0 0.32 that depends on the price of bitcoin and then you just times that by 365 so you're making so you're recouping $116 worth of heat energy backwards. And then you can choose to spend that however you want. You can choose to keep the Bitcoin. I personally am using it for solar mining, but you can use it for pool mining. And there's $100 off in the description if you wanted to go get one as well. Uh, just quickly mention that as well. So as I said, odds on Bitcoin, not great. Pool mining, you recoup some of the costs, but only if you're using it for actually heating something. It doesn't really factor in if you're just mining it to pool mine there's no profitability there so the intended purpose is to heat something but there are other coins that we can choose from and we can find out the probability so bitcoin cash i know a lot of people are kind of on the bitcoin cash wave right now so 6.33 and then 134 so we can do a calculation here and this kind of brings your probability down quite a lot so one block every 3365 days 365 gives you around nine years. So a chance to hit a Bitcoin cash block is nine years, but to hit a Bitcoin block is 2,642 years. You know, it's very feasible to actually hit a Bitcoin cash block on these solar miners. For example, if I was to go here and over across the whole of the hash rate, we have around 15 tera hash, let's just say, and let's put that into the calculator. Our odds are going to be probably around three to four years there. Now, would that pay off? I don't necessarily know because the cost of them is still a little bit more. The cost of Bitcoin Cash is going up and down all the time. Difficulty might be getting higher or lower. There's a lot of factors that go into it. But if you wanted to solo mine on one of these and have at least a potential, Bitcoin Cash is there, obviously. And a lot of people would want to go for Bitcoin over Bitcoin Cash the upside is quite a lot more. Overall, I've explained the odds for you, so you can kind of make your own decision on if you want to buy one of these or not. If you are going to pool mine, you kind of need to use the heat for something useful. Otherwise, you're just burning a hole in your pocket. You might as well spend the power cost on buying Bitcoin, so there's not really much point if you're going to solo mine. As I said, we do create content, so solo mining is kind of our bread and butter at the moment. That's why we're not using the heat. And all of this is to make videos such as this one where we can display all this technology and hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.